So one of the most important parts of the periodic table is um, uh, something uh, we mentioned before called electronegativity. Right. And electronegativity um, means that uh, you need to look at the first word, first uh, couple syllables in the uh, in, in, in the word uh, electronegativity, and you find electron. And electronegativity means electron loving. So the more electronegative an element is, the more it's going to want to uh, really hold on to those electrons. Now, taking it to the periodic table, um, if, say, we know that this is group one here, which is the first uh, column, group two here, we skip the transition metals for now. And we go to group three here, group four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we find that the number of valence electrons corresponds to the group number that that particular element is in. So in other words, everything in group one is going to have one valence electron uh, to uh, donate if it wants to uh, react with another um, element uh, to make a compound. Everything in group two has two valence electrons, which means it will donate two electrons to bond with uh, some other element. Uh, everything in group three has three valence electrons, four valence electrons, five valence electrons, and now we're at the uh, halfway point. These elements, uh, most of the time, are not going to uh, be giving up electrons. They're going to be gaining. And again, we want to make that octet, which is uh, an outermost uh, shell of eight. Uh, in other words, having eight valence electrons. So, <clears throat> groups one, groups two, groups three uh, are uh, going to be giving up uh, their one, two, or three valence electrons to keep eight in the outer shell. In that case, it would be the subshell, uh, depending on what element you're talking about. And then uh, groups five, six, seven are, are nine times out of ten going to want to gain either three, it's in group five, to make eight. Uh, two if it's in group six to make eight, and one electron in group seven to make eight. Okay, so that's uh, part of uh, uh, something uh, that's that's a little bit different, but it, it ties into electronegativity this way because as you um, uh, go from the bottom left to the top right, electronegativity is going to increase. Okay, in other words, um, since it's uh, going to be more electron loving in this corner here, it's going to be a lot more difficult for uh, so, some other uh, element to come along and pluck off any of these electrons, which makes sense because all these guys want to gain electrons. They don't want to lose electrons, right? Where if you look at the um, less electronegative elements in the bottom left and towards the left of the periodic table, the, these guys are, are not so electron loving, so it's going to be a little bit easier for them to donate uh, their one, two, or three valence electrons, right? So electronegativity, again, increases um, as you go from the bottom left to the top right, and it's going to become more difficult to pluck off those outermost electrons because, again, electronegativity means electron loving. Right. Now, <clears throat> another thing that increases as you go from um, bottom left to top right is something called ionization energy. And by definition, the ionization energy is the ability uh, to pluck off uh, one electron. And uh, obviously, it's going to require more energy for the more electron-loving elements here to pluck that uh, electron off. All right. If you look at the most electronegative uh, element, which is around four, uh, that's uh, fluorine. Thank you.
and the lowest will be towards the uh, the bottom left um, portion of the periodic table. Uh, electronegativity charts are great. Uh, get one. You'll constantly be using it because it will always be telling you how uh, an atom is going to behave. Depending on what type of atom it is, uh, it, it's, it's going to want to hold on to those um, valence electrons either more or less. And in chemistry, whenever you have a reaction, it, it all comes down to the behavior of those outermost valence electrons. That's going to do the bonding with another atom uh, or element. So, <clears throat> bottom left, top right, electronegativity increases. Bottom left, top right, ionization energy increases. Now, there's something that decreases as you go from um, top right to bottom left. In other words, it's not going to go this way. It's going to go this way, like that. And this is atomic radius. Fluorine's the smallest uh, type of atom you can get, and um, these atoms towards the bottom left are the largest. If you look at the nucleus where you have the protons and neutrons, and if you look at the outside where you have, let's say, if it's in group one, one valence electron, well, if something is less electronegative, so the electronegative force that uh, is being exuded by the nucleus of the atom is not going to be as strong. So this is going to be more loosely held. And if this is more loosely held, it's going to be larger. Because when you talk about atomic radius, it's talking about the entire atom. Okay, so if... Uh, again, if a uh, outermost electron is more uh, loosely held, in other words, less electronegative, right? it's going to have less ionization energy. It's going to be more easily plucked off, since electronegativity means electron loving. And all the electrons are going to be more loosely held. So if it's more loosely held, they're going to be further out from the nucleus of the atom and uh, hence have a larger radius.